Welcome back everyone and it's time to go balls deep. Once again, One Piece has blown our minds and I can't believe I'm saying this. Chapter 984 was even trending in the United States. I'm actually really glad that we are finally doing One Piece consistently because personally, I've been reading this manga for nearly half my life. Back in high school, college, when I got my first job and even when I was married. And now with you guys. But that's a testament to show how much One Piece is ingrained in our lives. It's literally like we are part of the story. To add to all of that, I have also started starting doing One Piece read-alongs and discussions with the Discord members which can be seen on Twitch. If you guys want to be part of it, then make sure to join our Discord and to increase your chance of being part of the discussion itself, then become a member on YouTube where you'll be prioritized in those aspects. But here's a shout out to SQV and Sonrio. I'm going to be using some of their points they mentioned in the discussion. And I know I've said this many times before, but I really appreciate all the support and love from you guys. Remember these videos depend on them, so smash that like button and get to the end of this video to show us that you guys are actually interested in our One Piece content. With that, let's finally get into the latest scoop of what's happening. Okay, so right off the bat, we see the fallout from the last chapter where Yamato smacked Ulti around. Her brother Pepe is all like, pull it together on chan It's time to stop! And then he goes and tells everyone around to simmer down and call a freaking doctor. This girl is out cold. And boy, these guys are pissed at Yamato. Everyone also seems concerned for page one, as he took a big hit from Luffy. Not gonna lie, that uppercut was a perfect finisher. But here we find our dear Pepe in mint condition, other than that jaw almost being dislocated. This suggests that the dinosaur zones are even a tier above other zones in the ancient class, specifically when it comes to durability. It does make some sense though, since Dan Dinosaurs do come from a harsher environment and they be thick as hell. Moving on, Ulti is pissed as ever and starts throwing another tantrum. This girl don't know when to stop. She then starts hugging page one, complaining how she got outdone by Yamato-san. Anyways, Pig Pig ain't having none of this. He calls his sister a psychopath because she's acting like she's hurt but she's moving around like nothing happened. This is some dysfunctional family bruh. But jokes aside, I actually do enjoy the dynamics between page one and Ulti. This sibling dynamics with the sister has a brother complex yet it's so crazy and klutzy that she ends up hurting him is so freaking entertaining i do want to see how it plays out in the anime and page one's stoic personality towards all of this is just the icing on the cake ulti starts raging out against yamato thinking how can this kid hang out with a grown-up kind of suggesting that ulti is older than yamato either that or she's just super conceited page one then gives a snarky comment being like well you seem fine ulti ignores that to still complain about yamato saying that the thunder bagua that she was hit by is more like a thunder sigua. Yeah, I butchered any hopes of pronouncing that. But basically, what she's trying to say is that the attack goes from 8 trigrams to 4 trigrams, conveying that Yamato is still a small fry who shouldn't be going around using his daddy's moves because Yamato simply ain't on his level. <laughs> The siblings then both start running towards Luffy and Yamato as a random ass fodder informs them that they have stopped moving. But they didn't stop! Luffy and Yamato just starts fighting in the middle of the freaking street! Luffy screams at Yamato, saying to back off! Luffy goes ham whipping out his elephant gun! But something interesting to note is that Luffy is using his gear 3 and gear 2 in conjunction very casually. We are seeing the fruits of Luffy's training in the prison, but Yamato ain't slouching either. This is just another testament and proof that Oda is providing to corroborate the fact that Yamato is Kaido's kid and isn't someone whom you should take lightly. Yamato pleads to Luffy telling him to stop and listen but our boy is in a rush and he's like nah fam you just got five seconds. Yamato wants to talk in private however but Luffy won't do it. The boy is shouting stranger danger all up in this shit. The fodder army on the side is looking at these two beasts battling and they can't even get near them probably because of the hockey is too strong. As Luffy and Yamato clashes more Yamato reminisces about his fight with someone in the past which is a definite foreshadow to ace like i said in my last video yamato has some prior knowledge of luffy he didn't know how he looked like but he didn't know luffy's name and probably kind of a brief description it's very likely that yamato clashed with ace as ace did come to wano also luffy's fighting style is very much like ace and sabo and i'm pretty sure yamato ain't talking about sabo but coming back to ulti and Pepe, who finally catches up to the spot but realizes that yamato and luffy are nowhere to be seen we then cut to orochi and momonosuke on the cross. Look how they massacred my boy, you freaking evil scum Orochi man. Oh god damn it dude. He just a child man. <laughs> <laughs> 
Orochi then starts telling his henchmen the story about her Momonosuke and the red scabbards. Pan travels into the present through Toki's ability, calling her a witch, but no one is believing him. How would anybody believe some time traveling nonsense, anyways, right? But the funniest thing in this chapter is Jimbe and Robin in the scene. They are both role playing Kaido's crew members and acting all gangster. I'm not sure if this is Robin, but it seems like she's asking to dig out poor Momonosuke's eyeballs. It's all an act, of course, because Robin quickly starts worrying about Momo. The coolest part to this is how fluid Jimbei fits in all of this. He is the right blend of seriousness and goofiness, and you got to see that latter side here, where he is going all Yakuza boss wide. This is a cheerful welcome and reminder to all the Jimbei haters who didn't want Jimbei to be part of the crew because he was too serious or wouldn't be able to gel with the straw hat. Let's be honest here, this scene wouldn't have been half as funny and comedic if Jimbei was absent. However, one question I have is whether Jimbei and Robin will be part of the fight directly against Orochi. Or will they just save Momo, then Kinemon will show up to mess up this guy's face. Because with Kine's history and the anger he must feel towards Orochi for uprooting his whole world and being the sole reason for Odin's demise, I really wish to see Orochi and Kinemon battle it out with the Firefox himself burning this greasy little garbage trash snake. We then move on to Law's group, who are still submerged in the sea. The plan was for them to get close enough behind Onigishima Island for Law to get everyone access through the back of the castle. However, like they mentioned in the last few chapters, getting close to the rear entrance of the island isn't too easy because of the crazy tide. But we are talking about Law's group here. They are experts when it comes to riding the submarine, the polar tank. Let's not forget about how they escaped with Luffy during the Battle of Marine Ford. So as they get close enough, Law and his main squeeze the trio along with Kiku, Raizo, Inu the ghost dog, Kappa and the obese Napoleon Dynamite or Ashura Doji as some like to call him gets into position to be shambled into the island from the ship. And seriously, just the thought of this makes it very clear on how much Law is freaking OP. His shambles allows him to switch any position of objects, living or non-living, within the vicinity of his room that he creates. His room is usually a few meters and the larger it is, the harder it is it is to maintain. However, they get close enough for Law to execute this, enabling him to switch himself and the lot with some stones, successfully breaching into the rear entrance of the island. Now a few things to notice is that it starts snowing, like it might lead to something in the next few chapters or it might just mean nothing. Also there are two entrances for Law and his group to go through, which he suggests the upper one leading directly to Kaido. Now coincidentally, while these guys arrived, Nikomumuchi, Marco and Izo have also arrived. These guys have a quick reunion Union, especially Kiku, especially Kiku and Izo. These siblings haven't seen each other in years. Ah, oh, goddamn, I got some tears on my eyes. This shit is better than Tanjiro and Nezuko's reunion from Demon Slayer. Now as this reunion happens, Marco makes his way back to scout the area as he spotted a shadow in the sea. I'm thinking someone new is going to join this crazy ass battle. Now some of you guys might be thinking, couldn't that shadow be Pero Spero? Well I don't know, I'm pretty sure Marco passed them along ago. In our Discord discussion, some of you suggested that it could be Pell the Falcon. If you guys have forgot who that was, he was one of the head guards in Alabaster. Now we know that Orihime and Vivi is locked up by Imsama and Oda is the master of introducing and mapping the future arcs the current ones. So it is kind of likely whoever is going to come into the fray might be the facilitator to the next arc. But going back to the manga, we go to the keep of the castle, this time in Kaido's location. The dragon beast himself is waiting for Big Mom to arrive so they can make their big announcement. Kaido decides to just do it alongside Momonosuke's execution as he and his old stars join the stage with Orochi. My G comes in and says he is going to spice up the execution with something more interesting. What the frick can be more interesting and crazy and like a spectacle of an execution of a child. What are you, crazy? Anyways, he proceeds to mention the new Onigashima initiative. If you guys want me to discuss what that might be, then let me know in the comment section below and then I'll make sure to do so in the next episode. Now, while all of this is going on, in the attic of the keep, Yamato has finally gotten Luffy to calm down a bit so Luffy can actually listen to what needs to be said. But Luffy being a busy man and whatnot, he only intends to give Yamato five minutes of his time. This is where we get a backstory to Yamato's character 
character. And seriously, guys, this is one of the craziest reveals ever. Yamato was actually a girl all along. What the frick? Who would have guessed? This is some Mulan shit. She even be looking sick. Man, this nigga sexy, bro. I don't be on no gay shit at all, bro. But this particular nigga right here, bro, that's one sexy ass nigga. Now, this girl starts by explaining how she is deeply inspired by Kozuki Odin and wants to be just like him. In which, obviously, her father Kaido wasn't too happy about that. So it seems like he gave her some parental beatings. Probably even worse than the ones I got from my own dad for not getting into med school. Hey yo, what the fuck? Which kind of does make me think that Kaido and Yamato are definitely Asian. Anyways, Yamato then explains 20 years ago she witnessed Odin being boiled alive for an hour, which actually showcased how much of a legend Odin was. And Yamato being so inspired by this man felt deeply hurt by Orochi and her own father's actions of killing him. We are talking about a 10 out of 10 fan here. Very close to even being Odin's simp. When witnessing such a tragic spectacle, it made her heart bleed and eyes tear up a tsunami. Somehow, after all of this, she found Odin's logbook. This journal seemed like the same one we see in Odin's flashback. Yamato mentioned that this book contains Odin's heroic tale and everything he held dear to him, even his dreams. Yamato then goes on to explain that this book is like a bible and Kaido and Orochi don't know about it. It's possible that Odin's logbook might contain some important information which can help the gang defeat Kaido and Orochi, along with potential information on One Piece itself and why opening Wano is so important. In our next One Piece video, I will go over this in detail explaining how Wano is connected to the One Piece treasure. If you don't know what the treasure is, then make sure to watch the part 1 to the upcoming video. The link is in the comment section below. Go watch it! But coming back to the chapter, after taking off her mask, Yamato showcases how much of a stand she is for Odin, as she even takes the identity of a male just because Odin was a male and she herself wants to be just like him. We are talking about some serious devotion here. Yamato behaving like a male and wearing a mask goes deeper than her belief though, as in the previous chapter, Yamato was referred as a male by the Tobiropo. This kind of tells us that not everyone knows about Yamato's true identity as a female. However, they could just be respecting her wishes to be a man. Now, previously in the last chapter, we knew Yamato had some knowledge of Luffy, so it felt like she was involved in the current affairs. But in this chapter, she goes on to state, Now that the Red Scabouts are dead, someone has to carry out Odin's will. That's why I intend to reopen this country. This means she isn't even aware that the Red Scabouts are actually alive. This chapter then ends with the ultimate reveal of Yamato telling Luffy that he is strong and that he reminds her of Ace, completing the foreshadowing that Oda placed in the earlier page when Yamato told Luffy the bout with him reminded her of all the time she fought with that person who now we are certain is Ace. A lot of things still needs to be answered like how much does Yamato know? Why did she escape just now? Does she have any informant or any other affiliation? We do know that she is definitely Kaido's daughter with her horn and shit but then this begs the question is Kaido even human? Because logically speaking if Kaido was a devil fruit user which gave him horns and the ability to transform into a dragon his offspring should not be able to obtain the trait of the devil fruit. So are the horns actually part of Kaido's DNA? And who is Yamato's mother? Is she just a random resident of Wano? Well I hope these questions are answered. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you guys want to share your theories though, make sure to join our discord where we can do a discussion. Overall I did enjoy the chapter, I was waiting for Ace to be mentioned again since Otoma mentioned him. Ace is like one of my favourite characters and I'm pretty hyped about this. But with that guys, I'll catch you till next time.